All right, uh, so sci-fi. We're doing fantasy. Mm. I could be a goblin with giant yeah. cute ears. You remember I did? I'm doing just something different with goblins this time around. This, I mean, really, it's the dungeon. You know, I mean, Rivendell's fine and all, but gotta do the dungeon. Uh, okay, so we'll do. Yeah, a dungeon. That looks good. Yeah, yeah looks good. We can yeah. do a dungeon. Cool. I mean, you know, like I want to turn myself into a potato. I mean, what, why would you do that? And and how? You know what? Let's just talk about online gaming on web DM. This episode is brought to you by Project Deus from Dungeon Fog. Project Deus sets out to revolutionize map making by creating a bundle of tools with tabletop role playing in mind. Create your interconnected worlds, regions, cities, and battle maps with everything from political borders to climate boundaries to interactive objects. It's easy to create, share, and even co-author your maps. They've even teamed up with World Anvil to integrate their campaign and character manager. All your tools for remote or in-person gaming are at your fingertips. Pre-orders are open now, and they get you first in line for the alpha, which opens May 25th. Don't miss out. Link in the comments and description. And Jim. I prove it. We're, we're, we're still here. The drums just here. died out. I can hear the faint echo. I hope so. Yes, I can hear it as well. It comes. <laughs> it's like coming through the ether or mm. something. Maybe perhaps yes. through a cable running through that ether. A series of uh, tubes. A series. Ah, thank you. Ether tubes. Ether thank tubes. You. So here we are uh, doing I, our first WebDM episode from uh, the inter- informational superhighway. Absolutely. Uh, just pulled yes. over on the shoulder. And mm-hmm. we're just yelling at you as you're zipping by on your trips between YouTube and TikTok. Exactly. This is in many ways how we sort of uh, do the podcast, although a bit more attention to uh, the, the visual component of it this time. Yeah. And that's kind of uh, maybe appropriate because today we're talking about, uh, I don't know, something different. I, this is, man, I, the new format's throwing me off because I feel like I took the host role from you, Pruitt. No, you didn't. Not at all. It. Not at all. We're talking about uh, online gaming. I mean, yes. uh, we're we're here in the midst of uh, living through uh, this event that is happening uh, with the lockdown and quarantine. And uh, let me tell you, online gamers will tell you it's like, well, we'll just do more of the same. Um, <laughs> it is a way to play the game. Uh, I've played most of my most of my gaming in the last three four years has been online. Yes. And uh, I mean, there's some pros. There's some cons, right? Absolutely, uh, absolutely. That point you make about like sort of the majority of the the game time that you've had has been o- online. That's been true for me as well. And so, in a lot of ways, we made this switch long ago before you know even the tools that are available uh, now are there. Mm-hmm. So it's like this is something that when I was thinking about it and thinking about the topic, like man, there's a lot that the recent articles and discussion about gaming online just is not talking about. Yeah. Like it, it's nice to have a, a quick list of like all the VTTs that are out there or like all the different ways you can jump on a, a video chat with someone. Mm-hmm. And like that's handy. And of all of those, I think like Sly Flourishes is probably the one that's the most comprehensive. I haven't really seen one of them yet that's taken the implications of gaming online and what that means for your game, what that means for the interactions between you and your players, and like how your game is going to change because the medium it is played in has changed. Right. You could you don't play play by post games the same way you do in session game or in person games. You don't play you know a lot of things <laughs> like you do once the medium changges. And so we should start uh, a pen pal RPG. Right. Yeah, there are people snail who mail. do that, right? Yeah. There are people who do that and they have a fun time playing it. And they also play games that are conducive to that style, right? You right. Know? And so I know diplomacy is sometimes played that way uh, by mail. <laughs> and so the love letter a, RPG. Right. Yeah. The love letter RPG. Exactly. <laughs> My dearest, I've thought about you every day. <laughs> I think there's at least one of those, uh, but, you, but it's solo game. Um, you just so write yeah, letters I, to yourself? <laughs> I think so. I don't. I don't know. We'd have to talk to some of our friends, some of our friends, friends of the show about it, because I am not. Uh, yeah, I'm not familiar with that one. But the thing that I've noticed is that there is a difference, and like, there's for a lot of people, I think the enthusiasm, the want to like make the switch and and be positive about it might be reluctant to say like this comes with both benefits and drawbacks yeah. like this is a new thing and in the same way that sometimes gaming in real life can be a huge pain in the ass there's a lot about online gaming that makes that really convenient and yeah it's kind of great <laughs> yeah oh oh definitely uh when, when when it comes to that one player at the table doing their thing again when you have a leroy jenkins being able to just click the mute button and turn your head from the camera and being like and you know, just let it. You can't do that 
when you're sitting at the table, right? No, you can't. You can't. You can't do that, right? There's, there's but I'm jumping ahead. That, and there's a lot that, like, changes about that dynamic because the fact that you're in a shared sort of virtual space doesn't necessarily mean that you – the same considerations you would make for other players and the like uh, are just going to be different. Yeah. You know? And like you said, muting yourself is one of those things, like keeping yourself, like – if you have to cough or sneeze or type something, uh, if you've got family in the background <laughs> that mm -hmm. are doing their thing, pets, you know. Yeah, barking able, dog. Barking dogs. <laughs> learning where your mute button is. And the, trust me, like I have been gaming in this for both uh, streaming for other people to watch as well as private games. I always forget to both mute and unmute. You know, it's so it's not yep. like a always, and if you don't, you're out of here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I've been, I've been doing professional online streaming and every game every game. someone forgets to unmute it's it's just it happens it's it fine happens. it happens uh, so and so don't so make it a big deal right I, I mean i would say that uh, the majority of people that i see like discovering you know like zoom or you know whatever mm -hmm. uh is not like my gamer friends like mm -hmm. a lot of gamer friends they know about these things Sure, because, sure. you know, at least they've seen online games, uh, you know, seeing people discover, did you know that there's this thing called Zoom? I had somebody say that to work. I'm like, yeah, I've been using it for a few yeah, years now. Right. Yeah. It's pretty great, huh? <laughs> They're like, I just don't know how to use it. And it's like, yeah, oh, well, yeah. maybe we should make a video about it. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so I do think that um, this is at least one of the, the, the good silver linings to look for sure. in yeah. this situation, because sure. there are a lot of advantages to online gaming, we can point those out. Um, mm -hmm. Like we said, not not being naive about this, there are some drawbacks. Certainly. Yeah. Uh, anyone in a long distance relationship, Jim, they'll tell you sexting is great. Sex is better. Sure, so there's certainly. <laughs> I think the entirety of WebDM at one point or another has been in one of those relationships. Yeah. I think we will all attest. So uh, yeah, we're not saying online game is better than IRL gaming. But it comes with a lot of strengths. But there's a lot of strengths. So let's get to those. I think for me, the strengths are uh, moving, you know, moving beyond the obvious strengths of having a VTT, which is that something mm -hmm. takes care of the rules for you. You can have a shared die roller, uh, the maps, things like that. The, if you've read the articles, then you know about uh, the strengths of those. But like moving beyond that, it's the fact that it allows you to more easily access mixed media yeah. to incorporate it into your game, whether it's audio that is pre-recorded from someone else uh either yourself or a family member or yeah or, you know a future guest player in your game mm -hmm. uh you know you can do something like that you can incorporate images in either by sharing an images or sharing screens using a, a program like roll 20 to have both maps and images uh, i don't think uh or google drawings i believe is mm -hmm. uh, sort of another program just sticking the image in front of your web camera <laughs> Hey, it's another one that. of those things, right? Like <laughs> you could kind of do that around the table, but if you're sharing images, then it's something that the players have uh, the ability to capture themselves or uh, or something. You can share a file. It's more easily accessed. So leaning into the fact that everybody's sitting at a computer looking at a screen, and that's probably a really common thing that they do. <laughs> Is like you can incorporate that in there. You don't want them wandering all over the place, like looking at whatever many tabs they have open, checking their email, checking social media, or whatever. Then give them something to do. Give them a reason. Give them something to look at. Give them something to engage with uh, as you're playing the game. Uh, yeah, and you did touch on kind of kind of the weakness of that, which is the fact that you're at a computer. Right. Yeah. Attention span can be an issue. Right. Certainly. You know, Certainly. you have the whole of the Internet in, you know, I mean, I have two monitors. Right. Yes. So yeah. sometimes it's just like I'm playing a game, but I'm over here like I got Twitter up. I got whatever <laughs> up. I'm muted because Pruitt. I practice good etiquette. Um, so you can't hear. Uh, oh, my God. God, you can't hear me not paying attention. Right? Yeah, yeah, certainly. If yeah. you're able to switch your attention like that, and there are plenty of people who can, I'm just, I'm just not one of them. But for me, I like playing in a room with that has nothing. You know, I'm, I'm in a basement, and I'm looking at a wall of insulation and like a workbench <laughs> that my stuff sit on. It's like nothing because if I have my desk toys and my books and yeah, my yeah. dice and everything else out, then those are all little shinies that are going to distract me. And the immediacy of a table, of being with friends around a table, keeps me tethered, keeps my focus uh, on the yeah. game. And I find it wanders a lot when mm -hmm. I'm uh, 
playing on. If I'm playing, when I'm DMing, it's it, it, yeah. I have no trouble with focus. Yeah. Well, Jim, what you just said uh, bounces me to uh, one of the strengths of focus, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is the fact that we're on Zoom right now, so right. we're looking at each other. Yes. And if we had, if it was one DM and say four players, that's five people, and you have them all in front of you, whereas at a table, you're around a table, you're looking at one person, you can see one or two others in your peripheral yeah. vision. Yeah. But like being able to see the reactions of everyone yes. to everything. Absolutely. I actually, I really like that. Like when yeah. you crack a joke and you see everyone break up laughing, you know, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I To me, that's a, that is a strength. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely can see that. And it, it for me, it allowed me to, it was the fact that it's removed. Mm-hmm. allowed me to approach it from a, a perspective of like, oh, I'm actually interested in this for the exchange that's going on. Whereas if it was happening at a table and it's like a moment between another player and a DM, I'm probably completely ignoring that. I'm probably looking through my papers, checking, you know, making auditing my character sheet, making sure I've got everything that I need going on and letting the DM and that player have their moment without kind of butting in. But the fact that it's removed allows me to observe that more closely and to be more uh, of a participant in that, or at least an observer of it, without interrupting. Like you can text or chat with the other players behind the scenes through direct messages or shared app or something and like talk about it, especially if you're playing a game that has a lot of character development and character, I would say, like, you know, interaction as its driving force. Or the possibility of PvP. Or the possibility of PvP, yeah. You know, like, yeah, like say in Zoom where you can, you know, chat, you have a chat up that everyone can chat behind Mm -hmm. who's talking, but you can also privately uh, message people and nobody knows about it. Right, right. So you have that possibility to kind of scheme and connive like (laughs) at the table without being obvious about, you know, like, oh, who are you texting over there? Right. Because I know that like at our table when we're playing in real life, I've, I've schemed with people, but then people start getting very suspicious at the table. We're like, oh, I yeah. thought we have a no texting policy. And it's like, oh, right. but I'm texting someone else at the table. Right. We're so, trying to be secret over here. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for pointing it out, you know, or even like DM notes, things like yes. that. I would definitely say that, you know, I've struggled with all different kinds of ways to pass secret information that just the very passing of the note tips the other players off. Mm-hmm. That something's going on to the point where when I'm a player and I know that I'm a, I anticipate that I am about to do something that the DM might want to pass me a secret note for, I will request that I have a, that we have some alone time. Be like, can all the players go outside, please? Well, before the event itself. Mm-hmm. So that it's just like, yeah, my guy goes off by themselves. You don't know anything. It's not like, oh, the wizard cast a spell on my guy and he got a secret note. Like, how can you not separate that information out? Yeah. Right. It's yeah, one of those the, metagaming situations where it's like it's too much to ask. Yeah, you know? you're in you're in a you're in a dark empty room and the DM asks for a perception check and everyone fails. Okay, you hear nothing. Yeah. But what was it's, there? That's yeah, but you what, know, but wait, we all knew we failed. Like that's one of the sort of I think that's why passive perception uh, as a complete tangent uh works well. Yeah. well but yeah. Yeah, it does. I and agree. So in that in that sense, it's stats like that that help you uh, run a sort of game online better. But we'll talk about that in a second. So Zoom is um, the passive perception of informational uh, yes. dissemination. Exactly. So that you know, you're, we're talking about the strengths of this platform. Visuals is one of them. You can use not just pictures, but like I have never used physical props in a game until I started gaming online. Mm-hmm. And partly that was because I sit at a desk full of a lot of sword letter openers and weird knickknacks that I've collected over the years. And, you know, it's easy to just go, oh, the idol looks like this, you know, I don't actually yeah. have any of them around me because I stream in a basement. Yeah. Uh, and so I, just having those things available, actually, I lied. I do have one with me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my, my favorite, uh, I like to break out as, a, as, an, as an auditory prop, but from yeah. uh, when Emma and I went to Monty Python and the Holy Grail at the draft house, so we got our coconuts. Yes. Nice. <laughs> and so you can you can throw in a little bit of a little bit of foley with your game. I would just say like the, one of the strengths of the platform we touched on a minute ago is sheer convenience. Yeah. Not just in terms of how easier it is to schedule games, just because you don't have people need to drive. Yeah. You know, people don't have to get find babysitters or the convenience of it is really a strength. You know. Yeah. People are more far more likely to do something if they don't have to leave their house. Sure. Well, everybody especially nowadays, right? Know it, well, especially if you can't leave your house. <laughs> especially if you can't. Uh, but 
But yes, I'm right there with you, Jim. And also, like, not making light of the current situation, but if somebody's feeling a bit under the weather and doesn't want to right. come to the game, well, guess yeah. what? Maybe they feel good enough to play. They just don't want to yeah. endanger their friends getting them sick. Certainly. And you Certainly. can still play. Or if you are maybe a little bit too ill to play, but you're like, hey, do you mind if I just hang out on the call and actually, you know, just watch the game? Just watch the game. Yeah, just be a private observer. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you can do point. that. Yeah, and um, that's if they have to miss for any reason. For me also, it's the fact that you can record it, even if you're never going to put it out there. The fact that you can, as a dungeon master, go back and watch your game yep. and, and and see what, you know, where is it that I'm getting my players engaged? Where, what did yes. I say that caused them all to look up? Oh, also, what was that NPC's name? And, oh, yes. you know, what did that player say to me? <laughs> you know, even if you don't save it for long term, you uh -huh. watch it within the next few weeks or... Yeah. It's really convenient and well, really great tool. My biggest thing, uh, especially the games I run, sometimes like I'll write down prophecies or riddles and stuff, but you get in the moment and sometimes you start to ad lib and you give your players an awesome prophecy and then you're like, shit, what was that? Like, what was right, the last yeah. two lines that I just made up? <laughs> like, I do that all the time. And I have Absolutely. to go back and, and go, okay, okay, west of the lake and blah, blah, blah. You know? Yeah. Of course, there's nothing stopping you from doing that now, you know, true you know, in life, uh, real life game tables. It's just much easier yeah. uh, when it's like this, which kind of like leans into a point of, of just the whole fact that there's now technology or much more technology involved in this is like giving people time to work out IT issues, <laughs> giving people time to get used to whatever platform you do decide to use. And like maybe budgeting that into your scheduling, be like, hey, it might take us 30 minutes for everybody to get online, stable connection, audio issues sorted out. That just might take that long. You know, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Before you have your session zero, you have your like tection zero or something <laughs> like that. Or however you wanna however you wanna phrase that. You know me. I, I, I go to the pun well <laughs> and I drink deeply of its of its uh, yes, anyway. I'm right there Golden with you, Jim. Waters, yes. Yeah, you no. need to make sure like everybody's on the same page. The biggest thing I would say is make sure your stuff is updated. Yeah. Especially if you're using like a virtual tabletop. Uh, some of them update pretty oh, yeah. regularly. And if you're all, if one person isn't, you might not be able to see a map or whatever. Yeah. Taking all these things into consideration, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, beforehand yeah. saves you a lot of time on the back end. To, sure. So you, you don't want it to sap the enjoyment of the game. This is where I say, you know, if use whatever app, website, service that you're comfortable with, but lean into it. Use it to the fullest. If you're going to go with a VTT, don't just use it as a shared die roller. There's plenty of just shared die rollers you can use online. But use it for something more than, than that. Use it for ease of access to the rules uh, if you decide to do a pay option. Produce visuals up to date and in the moment and of a caliber that you couldn't necessarily get with markers and a battle mat at home or something. If you don't, then it, it's really hard to keep that engagement up. And I would tell you that the games that I've played in that are like super tactical combat, like heavy on the die rolling and tactical thinking, they have worked because we use the VTTs to the fullest. Oh, you yeah. Know, and it enhances that gameplay mm -hmm. in the same way that tiles and 3D terrain and miniatures enhance that gameplay in real life. I completely agree. Uh, the, the Warhammer 40K game I, I, I played in with some, some people on our Discord, yeah. and we use Discord in Roll20. And yeah. using the maps with the with the markers, you get the line of sight, uh, it, the whole thing. It's there, and the rules are in place. If you want, like you said, if you want to do the pay option, and you know, sure, sure, it did like bring that experience to life. I'd say the drawback to that would be if you're learning a rule system and this is your first time with it. If you're having a computer program do all of the work for you, you're probably not going to learn the system that well. Yep. Uh, so keep that in mind. But other than that, like if you know the system really well, then it's kind of to your advantage because uh, you can get a lot out of the, you know, the free access versions or the, you know, so the or the open public versions because well, you got your rules, you know where to find things, easy to just plug it in and make uh, your own. So I feel like it's simplistic to say, but yeah, all of these things have a benefit and a drawback. It's a new platform, yeah. a new medium for play. Yeah, know? being at home, you know, if you're playing with a lot of players that have gained multiple years and have a lot of rule books, but they never bring them all to the game with them. Yes. I mean, like right now, if we were playing in a game, I have Just... all of my rule books right behind me. Yes. Right. Yeah, so certainly. if you don't have access to those, but you do have the physical copies, well, now you don't have to lug them all. Right. Grab one off the shelf and go, I'll look that rule up right quick. What has previously been a really bulky hobby 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it still is, so right? With your, yes, with your trunk and your <laughs> yes. huge back, your duffel. Yeah, you know, uh, especially if you play at a game store or something like that, you can get a similar experience without having to lug all around. I would say, though, that it fundamentally changes your gameplay. And yeah. this is one of those topics that I don't, I don't see a lot of uh, discussion about in the, you know, the major sort of, here's what it's like to do gaming online. There is something that uh, your best game ever, the book uh, by Monaco Games has, calls the invisible barrier. And it's like, there's just something, like a psychological barrier. There's, I find that, that the screen allows a certain intimacy because I can see just a face and I'm used to seeing that on TV and things like that. But I also miss an in-person game. I've mm -hmm. mostly gamed online for the, you know, mostly except for conventions and the occasional home game, you know, for the better part of what, three years now. Yeah. And so it is one of those things where I feel like I really crave that in-person experience. And part of that has been because the transition between like gaming for people in real life and or at a real, you know, table and gaming in a virtual environment requires different uh, GM techniques. Mm -hmm. as well as different types of engagement and participation for the players. And so it's been making that adjustment that I sometimes go like, I, I'm not sure I prefer this. I'm sh I might like the way we used to do it. So I've thought a lot about this and tried a lot of different things to get past this uh, issue. Or not issue, really, just the quality of it. No, yeah, I, I do understand that. But uh, the one thing that I do like that uh, a virtual environment gives is I find that people more naturally adhere to etiquette and less Ooh. cross talk sure right because when you're on a call like this and everybody starts talking at the same time no one can understand anything <laughs> because uh, audio clips out yes. whereas at the table there can be a little chatter over here while the dm and one player are doing doing something mm -hmm. and it might be annoying to the people who are participating in the game but sometimes you like let it go and then later on maybe like hey can y'all not well here right. you know you just use the backstage chat channel and yeah. you can just chat and just chat. it does add like a, a meta narrative to the game. Yes. We've talked about this before on shows <laughs> about online does. gaming. Like yeah. you have the game and then you have the meta chat. And then if you're doing like a streaming game, then there's the chat there. So yeah, there's a lot of, it, it adds other layers. It so. adds different layers that you have to get used to is what yeah. I'm saying. But at least for the most part, if everyone adheres to the etiquette of, of waiting for your turn to speak um, or just waiting for till someone completes a thought, yeah. then, you know, there is that. And I think you bring up a really good point. You know, it's, it's one of those things as a DM, I can find it distracting, especially if someone hasn't muted their mic. You know, there's a lot of clacking as the typing goes on. But mostly it's like, is there something there I would want to know about to help me run this game? And if there is, I feel as the dungeon master, or game master, whatever is, is that giving that information or making it available at some point doesn't have to be right then but just mm -hmm. like a catch-up at the oh hey we were chatting while this was going on to, so that you're better prepared for this in the future when we try this is just another kind of consideration that i find that i would take that time after a game as you're just sort of hanging out in the post-game wrap-up yeah, yeah to just kind of talk about that individually with each player as they're putting their books up you know putting their dishes away i don't know whatever you guys would do because uh, i was talking about D and d <laughs> and so pacing is another big one yeah you know like what you were talking about the cut down on table talk and chatter the thing that i was most surprised by and immediately struck with when i switched from gaming uh, online to gaming or gaming in person to online was like how much i got done in the sessions <laughs> like how much we would go through and and like a two or three hour session would have as much in it as a four or five or even six hour session depending on the the pace of the game mm -hmm. and like my sense of pacing out a campaign is based on the sense of having a five to six hour game in which a good hour of that time is probably going to be taken up by table talk because we're all friends you know it's hard to get us to not chat with each other just the fact that you can't all talk at once the, like you said the fact that the audio will cut out means that you have a much more focused game yeah. And therefore, the pacing can be quicker. Consequence of that, I found as a DM, was that I had less time uh, to pause and look at my notes and organize my thoughts. Because what I didn't realize was how much I was using the table talk to just, like, catch myself up in the game and go, like, okay, they went here. What did I say about this place? All right, let me look it up, that kind of thing. Yeah, you, you, are, much, you are much more in the moment, and you yeah. have to stay in the moment uh, yes. as, it, as it goes. I completely agree. Also, uh, 
to your point about pacing is using die rollers and stuff where people aren't having to add up how much it is. It's just a click. I did 32 damage. Yes. You didn't have to work. add up that 8d6 <laughs> right. fireball. Yes, which is, you know, <laughs> even that few seconds is enough to get something done. And so, yeah, you're up time. You're, you're needing to mm-hmm. be focused, especially, and, and because what, here's what I found is like, I found that funny voices and, and speaking in character as the DM came naturally when I started streaming, or not streaming, playing online, because it's like, I don't have much else. I can't gesticulate like I used to. I used to stand up and walk around and big arm movements and things like that. It doesn't translate when I'm in this box. Yeah, you gotta you gotta keep it. You've got to do something, and because <laughs> if you don't, it's so much easier to lose a player's attention. Yeah, that you are dealing with so many more distractions. If they're gaming from their home, then you've got whatever's going on around them. You've got whatever's on else is on their computer screen. You've got whatever else is going on like in their life that day that they could be dealing with. You don't have a, a person who's come to a place to do a thing you they've carved out a little block of time and they're like rushed from one thing to the next or something mm-hmm. a lot of times that's how it seems and and so it's like you've got to do more to grab their attention and keep it focused in that moment so it's like yeah ham it up funny voices uh visuals you can throw behind yourself if you're talking to a you know the evil prince you know you can have this throne or something behind you talking to devil's fire and flames you know use a something to change your voice yeah. uh you know something that will add a, an effect to it uh or something have someone else record it and just sort of play it while you gesture ominously those are ways to to like enhance engagement and enhance you're like buy-in and if the players see you buying in they're more likely to really buy in oh definitely uh having having like i mean i've i've enjoyed my uh my green screen and all the different fun things that you can do for (laughs) for whatever character i constantly love changing my background to whatever environment that i'm currently in Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. when i'm looking at the screen and we're in a dank and damp sewer and i have the background behind me that is a dank and damp sewer i feel more engaged like i like i feel like i'm sitting here and i'm creeping through the sewer (laughs) you know like it's another little layer uh that you don't you can't get it uh, at the table yeah it'd be very difficult too right especially like the immediacy of having the audio right in your ear you know the drip of a sewer pipe the step yeah. of wet footprints, they're much easier. And, and and the access to those tools, like, yeah, you could have them at your gaming table. And I think, like, there are certainly things I would take with me whenever I game in person uh, from gaming online. But, like, they're so much easier to use. The top tips for just DMing, techniques that don't really involve any technology, anything like that. We kind of touched on one of them, that is pacing. Mm-hmm. And I would say, especially with regards to players that have a tendency to fade away, they go into themselves or something, they, they drift away from the game, to throw them specific questions. Ask them, okay, you, the last time we saw you, or we checked in with you, you were doing this. And then ask a specific follow-up question. How, you know, how did you accomplish that? What, are your, what step are you on? That kind of thing. Because learning to quickly shift the spotlight Uh, It's going to help you keep up a quicker pace. It's going to help with player engagement. I just find that I have to do it more often uh, in an online game than I would in in real life. Uh, The other one is number of players. And I find that I prefer much smaller groups when I play online. And my preferred group size is two to three players, making the uh, referee or dungeon master, you know, an extra one. Um, Whereas before, I really liked a good six to seven member Mm-hmm. you know, big, big group of, uh, of players. Uh, and I find like five is my max. Like I can manage five players at the table, especially if they have different levels of engagement. Uh, if some of them I know are going to take what they want out of the game and grab it, <laughs> you know, and take the reins. Yeah. I'm, I'm more of a, the four to five, uh, player yeah. range myself. Yeah. But, uh, cause I find at that point, if you, if you throw a good hook in there and you sink it deep, there's a lot of those times where you, especially in online, people wanna people want the spotlight. So you sure. can just give them the spotlight, all of them, and let them pass it around between each other, and just let them oh, yeah, RP, yeah. Uh, yeah. and get back to get to what I think a, a really good game is, where the DM just kind of steps in when the new scene shows up. Or certainly, yeah, you know. yeah. And I think like that that really plays into a strength of the medium because I think that the medium favors exploration play and social intrigue and interaction much more than it favors combat like yeah we say buy into the vtt and learn it as well as you can but that takes time 
And if you don't have time for that or you don't have an inclination for it, then like theater of the mind with super simple initiative and using like zones of, of movement is a great way to downplay the importance of combat and enhance the importance of exploration based play, which is a lot of back and forth, you know, but now you can supplement it with cool visuals, sound effects, things like that. And then the social interaction, which is like, I think really where the medium shines. And some of mm -hmm. my favorite games that I've played have been ones that featured uh, social interaction very heavily. And like the rule system supported that uh, interaction with, you know, <laughs> results that didn't seem outlandish, lots of uh, interesting ways to interact with the mechanics. Definitely visuals are, are one thing. And also uh, on your computer screen, if you just go like all white on a computer screen, you have some nice shiny glasses, you can really get that anime villain. So oh, yeah. if you really want to be like, uh, what's his name, the dad from uh, Neon Genesis, uh, you can you can really lean into know. that role. Just like photo negatives. Mm -hmm. Like you can do things with like, oh, you've been affected by a spell or something. One tip that I saw, and I can't remember where I saw it, was for players to have cards with numbers zero through nine that they can hold up. So for things like initiative or something like that, you just hold, find the two cards that give you your die result. And so the dungeon master can quickly assess and look at each person's camera to see who's in the initiative order or something like that. And it's a real handy way to not have everybody just start talking at once. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why I moved to Shadow with a Demon Lord style initiative, because I didn't care to have everybody shouting their numbers at me at once. Best thing, especially if you're using Zoom, anything that displays a name on the window, yeah. rename that to your character name and your armor class. Yeah, passive just perception. Just put that up there, there or passive there. perception, whatever information you're allowed to put in there that just will make play even even that much quicker and more interactive. Well, and talk about a way to enhance like player immersion. It's mm -hmm. like if you have under in your little nameplate on that, it's your character's name, then people are more likely to call you and refer to you by your character name, meaning that it's much easier to sort of like get into character and get that immersive experience that a lot of people play for. And mm -hmm. for me, the paradox of playing online is that I've had so much more immersive experiences playing online as opposed to in real life, which I find baffling, <laughs> but it has been my experience, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm right there with you, man. It, it totally changed how I play the game. I was Certain, much oh, yeah. more of an RPer. It's getting back to being comfortable in your own space. Sure. I'm in my house where I make stupid voices all the time. Right. So why not put on a weird wig and a little bit of makeup and an <laughs> outfit and just do that for my game? Sure. Because why not? You know, you're anyway. already doing something new. Why not? Yeah, you're already doing something new. So I don't think IRL gaming is going to go anywhere. No, it'll be back, and it's it's back. the this, way most people play. Yeah. This gives you flexibility. Can only two people make it to the game? Don't make the drive. We'll just hop online. Do you only have two hours or hour and a half to play? then it's no hassle. This is the master's degree in history, uh, Jim speaking for a minute. Like we don't know what the future holds for us. We don't know how many times this is going to be a, a thing in our lives. And so being able to switch between the two mediums to go like, shit, well, you know, the, we gotta stay indoors this week or there's something else that mm -hmm. we have to shelter in place. Like having that flexibility is just gonna enhance your game. And like I said, it, there doesn't have to be any kind of disaster going on. It could just be that it's more convenient for you. Yeah. And that this week you just don't feel like getting dressed and you just don't feel you got a, you know, a big work week ahead or it's just been one of those days. And it would just be much easier because you still want to do this thing to just log in online. And when you, and you can even mix the two because you can set up a, like a laptop with a camera at the table where mm -hmm. the rest of you were playing online. And we you have can done just, that. We have done that. It's different. It's weird. That's a hurdle that you're going to have to get past and you might not be able to, but it is satisfying gaming and like, don't let your gaming groups get, uh, you know, spread apart and lose touch with one another uh, because of this. But like, also yeah. you're going to need to know more than like which platform to use. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, there's, there's a whole helped. lot. <laughs> if you just need to go to the bathroom, you don't have to interrupt play. You just you type you just bio, break. bio break. Bio break. BRB. It's, it's what we do. All, BRB. You know, like, and that's that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think it's uh, it's those sorts of things are good considerations, but I don't know that I have anything else. I'm just going to keep rambling, Pruitt. You know how it goes. Well, I mean, I this is a Wednesday show, though. It's not. Cuts me so off. We, you, we normally just find a joke and we cut on it, and that's oh where God. Trav like, ends it. But I don't, I don't know if we're going to have that. I don't know either. It's a whole... Pruitt, this is new territory. Yeah. We're in a new format. This is a brand new world. I, if I could hold your hand, I would. 
But uh, I can show you the world. Oh my God! This is so romantic. Shining, so shimmering, just like it's a whole splendid. friendship experience. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, and go ahead and ring that bell to get those notifications. The Web DM exists thanks to our Patreon patrons, the, the Web, Web Demons. Demons. If you join the Web Demons, you'll get our weekly podcast, show audio, discounts that'll save you way more than $5 a month on books and dice, and so much more. Check out our free podcast episodes right now, including our free interview with Luke Gygax about all things D&D. If you like our advice for your games, then why don't you come check us out and watch us play? Yeah, head on over to our second YouTube channel, Web DM Plays, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Okay, if this is is shown. I don't know. You'd have to ask Disney. <laughs> Trav, what do you think? What's the question? Is that, is, oh, if I drink from my mug. Of course it is. Yo, the best boyfriend. Of course it is. Go for it. <laughs>